Fast GCD. How do you efficiently compute the GCD of 1071 and 462? First of all, what is GCD? It stands for the greatest common divisor. It is the greatest integer that divides two integers without a remainder. For example, the GCD of 7 and 21 is 7, the GCD of 24 and 30 is 6, and the GCD of 7 and 9 is equal to 1, which makes those two numbers co-prime. We can try brute force, going from the smaller of the two numbers until we hit 1. However, the time complexity of this is clearly linear, which is not good. Introducing the Euclidean algorithm. The Euclidean algorithm can be explained using a lemma consisting of three parts. The first part states that the GCD of A and B is equal to the GCD of B and A, which is relatively straightforward. The second part states that if A is greater than 0 and A divides B, then the GCD of A and B is equal to A. This makes sense because if you assume for the sake of contradiction that the GCD is greater than A, then that cannot possibly divide A because it's greater than A. For the third part, we have that if A is congruent to C mod B, then the GCD of A and B is equal to the GCD of C and B. The way we can explain this is we have that A minus C, B must divide because A is congruent to C mod B, which means that the difference between the two, it'll be specifically congruent straight from the definition of congruency. Now if we have that b divides a minus c, and we have that for some y, by is equal to a minus c. So there exists some y integer. Now from this, we have that c is equal to a minus by. Now there exists some d integer, such that d divides a and d divides b, which we will say is the greatest common divisor. Now clearly, d also divides a minus by. The reason for this is we're simply multiplying it by a factor of b. But if d divides a minus by, then d also divides c, because a minus by is equal to c. Therefore, the greatest common divisor of a and b is also the greatest common divisor of b and c. Now, having these three simple facts, we can actually explain precisely how the Euclidean algorithm works. Now, in order to compute the GCD of A and B, we can simply get uh, that A is equal to B Q1 plus R1, where R1 is less than B. Now we have from this part over here, we have that GCD of AB is equal to the GCD of B, R1. Now we can also rewrite this equation further into B equals R1 Q2 plus R2, where R2 is less than R1. And similarly, we get that the GCD of B, R1 is equal to the GCD of R1, R2. And we can actually continue this, and we notice that R1 is less than B, R2 is less than R1, so we can rewrite this as R1 is greater than R2 is greater than until we get to some R k minus 1 is greater than rk, but then rk will be equal to 0. So then we get that the GCD of all of these ones is going to be equal to rk minus 1 comma 0. And then we have from this part over here that the GCD of rk minus 1 is 0, if a is greater than 0 and a divides b, then we have simply that the GCD of rk minus 1 is 0 is equal to r Minus one. And this is the founding principle of the Euclidean algorithm. The implementation is very straightforward. The first step is you have a base case where b is equal to 0, in which case we just simply return a, which follows directly from our explanation prior. The rest is just a recursive call where a becomes b and b becomes a mod b. The complexity analysis of this shows us that with the observation that when we do gcd of b, comma, a mod b recursive call, the new b parameter is at most a divided by 2 size when b is not equal to 0. The proof is below if you're interested and want to pause the video. Therefore, we actually obtain a time complexity that is logarithmic in terms of the size of n. So having this, we vastly improved the time complexity from linear to logarithmic. Thanks for watching, please leave a like and any comments below if you have any questions, and please subscribe for new videos every Friday at 12pm Eastern. Thanks again.